Well, Jorge Prado, welcome to the USA, first of all. Um, just kind of take me through how it's been for you out here so far and how you're enjoying California. Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun, to be honest. Uh, I really like it. I'm enjoying it a lot. Obviously, I'm taking it, taking it easy and uh, taking day by day, stepping every day, getting better. So, um, no, I'm just over here trying to figure out how it's Supercross and if I like it or not. And just uh, I was wondering if I... Yeah, if I would love to, to race here or not. So for that, I, I need to come over and, and give it a try, you know? So that's why we are here, just to try out. Before we get into the Supercross side of it, let's talk about your 2023 season real quick. Uh, congratulations, of course, on Thank the you. world title, first of all. Um, but now that it's been a month removed or so, you've had time to reflect on it. Just take me through how it actually feels to hear Jorge Prado, MXGP world champion. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. It's a dream come true, you know. I've been working my whole career to get ever uh, a MXGP title and final this year I got it done and it's a relief, you know, out of my shoulders. Um, my, like I said, I achieved my goal and um, it's, it's incredible. It's so hard to, to get it um, yeah, done. Uh, injuries, this sport, it's brutal. So I'm super happy about, about how my 23 season went. For you, you're from Spain and you become the first MXGP world champion from Spain. Just kind of tell me the, the feelings that you have of uh, like a national pride, I guess, to be at the forefront of this almost feels like a Spanish revolution a little bit with Guillaume and Ruben and Oliver and yeah. all those guys. I mean, it's nice. Uh, I think my world title will make also uh, the rest of the Spanish kids that are coming up um, have more, let's say, motivation, you know, to reach their goals. and. They can see that a Spanish guy can also be world champion, so uh, hopefully I can uh, be an inspiration for more kids and yeah, just trying to get uh, Spain uh, more often in uh, motocross. Yes, uh, so world motocross champion, but we're, we're here at a supercross track today. So like you said, you came out here, you wanted to try it out, you wanted to see how you felt on it. Um, just kind of take me through the, the two weeks that you've been here so far, what it's been like and what the experience has been like. Well, yeah, last week was my first week riding Supercross, so obviously the first day uh, was hard because of the jet lag, <laughs> especially of, of jet lag was hard, but, um, but no, um, it's nice. I, I started slowly the first day, I didn't even go through the whoops, and then I started going backwards and then just through them. So, uh, no, just taking it easy, like I said before. Um, it's very nice. Uh, here, K the KDM group have incredible um, facility with a workshop and uh, two test tracks close to the, let's say, to the workshop, like just five minutes away. So it's, um, it's very nice. It's very nice for working, very nice for training, and um, it's, the, it's a nice group of people. Like you said, you wanted to come out here and, and kind of really get an understanding of how you felt yeah. after a couple of weeks on it. So you're not at the end of it yet. You still have a couple more days of riding, but, you know, has it been, I guess, exactly as you expected? Has it been better? Well, to be honest, I expect it to be worse okay <laughs> really i like i've been enjoying it more than what i what i actually thought i thought it was going to be fun but i'm actually having more fun mm -hmm. probably because i have no pressure <laughs> too. i'm just riding for like i said just to uh, have fun and uh, trying it out so every time i go like in the track i just try to ride um uh, smooth try to learn i try to learn from all these guys you know that are incredible fast so um, yeah, it's been uh, going very well. Um, the second week I start feeling better and better, like good progress and yeah, I'm quite comfortable, I need to say. Good. As many people know, you did come here in 2016, did a little bit of testing with the Troy Lee Designs team back then. Um, you know, going back to then, that's before you even debuted in MX2. Yeah. What level of interest did you have back then of coming to the US and, and was were you ever close to actually doing yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, so I came over, um, November 2015 and I stayed till like the first round it was Anaheim in January mm -hmm. so a little bit after that so that was already 2016 uh, and my goal was to come and race in USA yeah. so that's why in that time I even stay here for like two months and a half or something like that so it's already quite a good time and and I've been I was riding every day and training with the Troy Lee guys and I learned a lot um, but then I went back to Europe, I had to do uh, GPs and stuff and I got my first world title, I got my second world title in MX2 and I just kind of had the motivation to keep going uh, 
uh, passing yeah to the 450 class mm -hmm. and try to get a title too so I really focused my career in the last years just to get this MXGP title so that was my main goal and that's why I never even thought in the last years to come over mm -hmm. but now that I achieve all my goals um, back in Europe um, you know, uh, would be maybe nice also and interesting to come and race in 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 the U.S. Obviously, um, it needs some time, but um, that's why I'm here also trying out, speaking with everyone, and getting some feedback. So it's not too bad. So is it that uh, the itch was never really scratched? Like you always wanted to come to the U.S. at some point, and it just never kind of worked out over the years. Or now that you <clears> feel that you've achieved what you have in GPS, you're almost looking for a new challenge as well. Yeah, I mean, it's like you said, it's more about a new challenge. Um, because uh, it, it's it's the same, but it's different. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still the same bike, but it's the rhythms, the jumps, the whoops, everything. It's just so different to riding motocross, especially in Europe, right. where the jumps are very small, also in the GPs. So here you gotta be perfect with your timing and the turns, and it's just different. You gotta have also a little bit different riding style. So, um, so yeah, uh, you need riding and you need training. Um, and, and we'll see, we'll see. It's, uh, we are having a lot of fun. Well, I know you mentioned uh, to Lewis Phillips of Vital MX back at Nations <laughs> that you're locked in for next year. You're going to be racing uh, MXGP again to defend your world title. And then the options after that are 2025, maybe come over here. Um, is that still the plan? And moving forward, is it something that now that you've been here, you're like, OK, I think I really can entertain a, a I mean, career in the US. The main, the main plan was going back now to Europe and, and uh, get ready for the new season. Mm -hmm. So firstly, guess, get some rest and then <laughs> get ready for the uh, 24 MXGP season. That was the main plan. but. You never know. Um, I mean, um, it's it's hard to say, but that's the that's the main plan. Yeah. When you look at the competition that's in the U.S. as well, what uh, interests you about racing riders that are here versus what you've seen over in the GP scene? I think it's more about racing a different kind of um, not sport, but riding Supercross. Mm -hmm. uh, my goal, well, my goal. Um, I, I've been always looking up to riding and racing Supercross and entering into a stadium and racing under the lights, and that's an experience I really want to. You know, to experience. So, um, so yeah. I mean, it would be nice to just um, try it out. And uh, when I was a small kid, actually, my main goal was to ever race in U.S. So, I achieved many things in Europe. Let's maybe get the same over here. Uh, as we pivot back to MXGP here for the end of this, um, you know, you're going into next year as a defending world champion. You've done it before in MX2, so it's not new necessarily but it's new in this class do you expect it to feel much different having like a target on your back no i think not um to be honest i think it's even better you know because i already did my job this year and um i i know i still have like a big room for improvement so i just need to keep working hard i'm a very hard worker uh, athlete so uh, just trying to get better and better so um no we have a very good solid base this year so uh, let's see if we can step it up and uh, get even better for the next season. And then lastly, uh, if your MXGP career ended in Europe today, for example, and you look back at your MX2 world titles, your MXGP world title, do you feel that you can look at that and be completely satisfied or do you still feel like next year is, is some business that you want to kind of wrap up and, and defend this world title? If I look back, I'm satisfied. I'm not a guy that wants to win more GPs than anyone else, that wants to win more titles than anyone else. I'm happy when I can win uh, the year I'm racing. Uh, I, don't, I don't need to be racing 250 for seven years like many other riders mm -hmm. that would like to, you know, just keep winning in the same class. I step up to the 450 very quick. You know, when I was 18, I was already racing nations with the 450. So, um, and I was very small guy, like not really a 450 like kind of body. So, um, so no, I mean, um, I always like new challenges and I don't, I don't like to keep it and, and, uh, and stay in one class just to, just to win things. So, uh, like, like I said, I like new challenges and this could be a nice challenge too. Well, you're still very young, so I feel like there's quite a bit of career ahead that you can continue <laughs> to plan out. But uh, we appreciate the time. Thank you so much for sitting down with us. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank you, guys. It's uh, been fun to see you out here in the USA and testing some Supercross. Thank you. Thank you, guys.